Dear fans, friends and subscribers, welcome back to the daily cricket show, Cricket Happenings. And on this particular cricket show, uh, I'm going to be previewing the fifth and the final One Day International that is coming up tomorrow, which is going to be played between India and the Sri Lankans. It's going to be played at the Ketarama Stadium. And uh, let's say for India, it is about having a clean sweep of the Sri Lankan series. But as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, if at all they could win, if, if India actually go on and make a clean sweep of the series, make it 5-0, then for Sri Lanka, uh, it will be... I mean, we know that Sri Lanka can't automatically qualify for the World Cup. They would have an eye on the West Indies. And if they manage to win one, what uh, the, the life might become a bit easy for them. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, what would happen is if at all uh, India managed to actually win it uh, five nil, uh, then uh, it it become. Uh, I mean, uh, they have to uh, the West Indies uh, have to only win four matches against England. But if uh, if Sri Lanka managed to win this, then what would happen? They would not only salvage something but they would have it a bit easy where West Indies have to win five matches to automatically qualify for World Cup 2019. So that is the equation right now. So I'll be previewing the fifth and final ODI, which is coming up between India and Sri Lanka. And as far as uh, the Caribbean Premier League yesterday saw a wonderful match where Guyana Amazon Warriors did a wonderful job and what a way they they made sure that they qualified uh, with this victory as Jamaica Talawas were, were, were beaten by nine wickets. It was a thumping victory. It was a walk in the park victory uh, for the Guyana Amazon Warriors, especially Shadwick Walton. What a battle we had between Shadwick Walton and Kesrick Williams from Jamaica Talawas. It was a real script there. Uh, and, uh, and Luke Ronke giving him company, Walton smashing 84 uh, in no time. And also Luke Ronke uh, giving him superb company uh, when the uh, guy and Amazon Warriors, as I said, they had a walk in the park victory by nine wickets. So that is two, two matches. And also we'll have a look at some cricket news. There's not much of cricket news to really talk about, but if at all there is some... Uh, I would definitely, definitely dwelling on that. There is no doubt about it. And uh, well, but I'm going to start off uh, without any further ado here uh, with the Sri Lanka versus India final one day international that is coming up tomorrow played at the Ketarama. So let's look at the Sri Lankan team because they are the ones under immense pressure. Uh, well, uh, they're going to be going with the uh, probably the same combination uh, that played in the fourth one day international, Nirushan Dikwala and Dilshan Munavira will open the innings for Sri Lanka. And um, I mean, both are very good. You know, Nirushan Dikwala has already shown what an aggressive player he can be. And he's quite unpredictable, let me tell you. He, he, will, he will hit your balls on the off stamp on to the leg side. Dilshan Munavira likes to get on with the game, likes to have a slash at the ball uh, when, whenever the time permits. Whenever, I mean, he, he's one who is not going to be sitting there, but uh, definitely playing strokes. Kushal Mendes would be expected uh, to come up um, uh, with uh, uh, come up in a big way because he's a very talented bloke. Probably Sri Lanka, if at all, their chances of uh, actually winning a solitary one-day international against India is concerned. It could be probably a Kushal Mendes century, which could really help matters. Nupal Taranga is back as the captain, as he has been. He was banned for two matches for the overrate. And he's back and he would definitely keep an eye on the overrate. And Upal Taranga will captain the Sri Lankan team. And his batting has been a big question mark in this one ODI series. Whether Upal Taranga as a captain can play a captain's knock tomorrow. Another question there. Angelo Matthews already, I mean, he, he, he led a lone battle in the previous one day international. Where he made 70 odd runs of 80 deliveries with um, 11 fours I reckon. Uh, and then they have Lairu Thirimane. Lairu Thirimane definitely uh, played very well, no doubt about it, in his uh, limited uh, chances he has got. 
and he is a very fine prospect. Melinda Srivardhana, a very, very, uh, an, an all-rounder with lots of ability, I would say. Uh, Akila Dhananjaya, the spinner, um, who really spun a web in one of the matches where Sri Lanka, that was the only once that probably one thought that Sri Lanka might uh, win the match. But other than that, Sri Lanka have been looking listless against the Indians. Dushmanta Chamira or Melinda Pushpakumara. Now, who is going to play? That is going to be interesting. Whether Chamira plays or excuse me, Pushpakumara, who would be playing tomorrow. Uh, Vishwa Fernando has been given a long reign and he has been the one who has been the workhorse for the Sri Lankans uh, in this particular ODI series. Uh, he has the experience, Lasit Malinga, uh, getting the new cherry along with him. And Lasit Malinga definitely uh, has lost his luster, I can say. I mean, he does not look the Malinga of old. One can understand that with the passing of age. But whether Lasit Malinga will be there at the 2019 World Cup, I really feel uh, that uh, Lasit Malinga... Uh, I, I, I have a sincere feeling that Lasit Malinga uh, might not be there for the 2019 World Cup. Well, if he, if he really pushes himself, he might be there. But other than that, Lasit Malinga has not looked very impressive at all. Now, as far as the Indians are concerned, um, uh, the news is that uh, Shikhar Dhawan uh, will be missing this particular match because his mother is ailing and he has gone back to his uh, hometown. So Ajinkya Rahane will get an opportunity uh, to... Um, Ajinkya Rahane will partner Rohit Sharma. Look at the wealth of talent that India has. Ajinkya Rahane, one of the wonderful batsmen um, for India, uh, he, ha he has to actually cool his heels in the pavilion. Uh, the dugout, uh, basically because, uh, you know, uh, there was no place for him. And here comes Ajinkya Rahane into the team and he would be partnering Rohit Sharma, who is in some uh, pristine form, I would say. Virat Kohli is coming on his 29th ODI turn, so he has already come up with the goods there, Virat Kohli. Uh, KL Rahul, now, it will be interesting to see, uh, after KL Rahul has been uh, uh, pushed on to the middle order slot, I mean, coming at number two, uh, he has not been amongst the runs and so that is something that needs to be addressed. So KL Rahul will be hoping that uh, he is able to uh, get going tomorrow in this final one ODI. Uh, Manish Pandey, as I said, I, I rate him as Mr. Consistent uh, because he got only one solitary, op solitary opportunity and he made an unbeaten 50. So that really says a lot about this very, very talented cricketer, Manish Pandey. Uh, MS Dhoni, uh, one knows uh, what MS Dhoni can do. I mean, if one had really uh, looked into the uh, uh, into the news today, uh, the Indian coach uh, Ravi Shastri, uh, former um, uh, um, an all rounder Ravi Shastri, mentioned that you know Dhoni uh, is um, is uh, absolutely as fresh as ever, uh, and he says that you know nobody can really say that you know whether Dhoni will play in the 2019 World Cup. Uh, he says that Dhoni. Uh, he's already showing everything through his performance. And I think I, I entirely agree uh, with uh, Ravi Shastri on this. Hardik Pandya, you know, is an X-factor for India nowadays in every match. Akshar Patel has been doing a fine job with the ball. Uh, he has not been... Is, is, the opportunities to bat has been very limited for Akshar Patel. Uh, the balling will be in hands once again. Shardul Thakur, uh, who bowled very well. Uh, in, the, in his, in his uh, debut uh, ODI, this was the last match. Now, we'll get an opportunity once more uh, to show his wares. Um, and he was the one who gave the breakthrough, as you would remember. And Jaspreet Bumra, well, Jaspreet Bumra is, you know, already he has, uh, he has already shown uh, his, uh, his caliber there. So, Shadow and Jaspreet Bumra will handle the new ball. Kuldeep Yadav has been doing a fine job as well. And this is the composition. So, Ketarama. Uh, has uh, I'm told that, sh that uh, there's a lot of grass left, so it's a green grass, uh, so it could definitely help the seamers, uh, and also there could be a possibility of an afternoon showers. Uh, but all in all, I think um, we are really looking forward uh, to a one-day international tomorrow. Uh, so all eyes will be on both the teams. The India will be hoping that uh, India make a clean sweep of the uh, five-match ODI series final against Sri Lanka, and Sri Lanka will be hoping that they pick up a solitary win under the belt just to, you know, already India has already clean swept them in the test series and now the ODI series. So they would be hoping they could put it across India. But one knows that India right now are riding on a big high 
and I think uh, it doesn't look like someone could really stop India, especially Sri Lanka with the problems that they're facing as far as injuries are concerned. Uh, one has their one has their own doubts, but well, uh, what I, I mean, I, I I'm nobody. I, I'm a person who only gives the opinion on cricket show. So I would say tomorrow, when at the center uh, of the Ketrama Stadium, when this all happens, uh, we will know the outcome. So let's uh, wait and watch. Uh, now the next match. Uh, now we are uh, shifting from here to the Caribbean Premier League. Um, and we are talking about the match that was played yesterday, which was a very important match for the Guyana Amazon Warriors against the Jamaica Talawas. And it was Jamaica Talawas who batted first, and they could not really put up a very good score on the board. They put 149 for 7 of their 20 overs. Uh, Lendl Simmons making 15 of as many balls with 2 fours. Glenn Phillips making 10 of 9 balls with 2 fours. So, not a good start for the um, Jamaica Talawas. Sanka Karab, uh, f um, uh, you know, flayed the bowling for 38 of 31, 2 four, 1 6. McCarthy, who has been very impressive in this Caribbean Premier League, showed um, his uh, showed his real uh, uh, character uh, by slamming 44 of 35, that was 4 fours and 3 sixes. 16 from the bat of Roman Powell of as many balls, 1 4, 1 6. Other than that, there was nothing to really talk about. Mohamed Allah out for Jarath and Fu for 7, and 149 for 7 was the score that Jamaica Talabas put on the board. The Sohel Tanvir uh, bowled uh, decently, 4 hours 227, 1 for 26 for Versami Permal. Uh, um, Ryan Emrit, uh, the captain, uh, did a good job, 4 hours 100 and 229. Uh, Jacob Sri was 9 for 26, Rashid Khan, 4 hours 9 for 25, and Primus bowled 101 for 6. Guyana Amazon Warriors were given a target of 149. Now, Shavik Walton and Sohel Tanvir opened the innings. The, the start was not good. Uh, Ocean Thomas was uh, going all over the place. The other day, as you know, Ocean Thomas impressed with his speed. Even yesterday, one saw that this 20-year-old uh, bloke was getting the ball to set. I mean, he was he was hitting the pace uh, at, at um, regularly at times, uh, and he was getting the ball to bounce up too. But uh, Ocean Thomas uh, was a bit uh, wavered in his line, and he got punished, especially by Shadwick Walton. Who really clattered him for fours and sixes aplenty. Uh, Sohel Tanvir, in fact, uh, Ocean Thomas uh, figures were absolutely ruined because of recognition as his two overs. Uh, I mean, let's look at the bowling because Gan Amazon Warriors uh, went on to win the match by nine wickets with uh, Walton clattering an unbeaten 84 of just 40 deliveries, eight fours and six sixes. And Liu Kronke pasting an unbeaten 55 of 29 deliveries, four fours and three sixes. And nine wicket victory. And as far as the bowling from the uh, the Jamaica Talavas were concerned, they were absolutely slammed. Oshin Thomas, two overs, one for 32. Krishmar Santoki bowled a solitary over. He was uh, taken for 13. Kesrik Williams was the real battle between Kesrik Williams and Chadwick Walton. And that is something that I'm going to speak about on this great show. Memudullah, three overs, um, hit for 38 runs without a wicket. Sammy, two overs for 14. McCarthy uh, bowled uh, three balls and he went for six runs. But um, definitely, uh, Shadwick Walton, what a, I mean, he looks uh, a very aggressive bloke. And in the way he was, he, he took on Shane Thomas, he took on Chris Marson Togi, and uh, they were slamming it all across the park. Walton, I mean, you name it, he, 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 he was playing some wonderful strokes. Whether it is in the offside, he was going over the point in third man region. If it was on the leg side, he was uh, he was beautifully uh, putting it through the mid wicket region, and uh, he was very very strong. Let me tell you, he was looking ominous. Luke Ronke joined him in the fun as well. As Luke Ronke also got uh, by hitting Shane Thomas for two sixes uh, in a single over, and they were absolutely breezing along. Fifteen for one was the score, and after that, it was the highest ever partnership. In a Caribbean Premier League history, 135 runs done in pretty, pretty quick time. In fact, uh, they took 14, they, they, they completed the target in 10.3 overs and uh, after, after one over, the score was 15 for one. So you could just imagine 135 runs done by Shadwick Walton and Luke Ronke. Uh, in 54 balls, they absolutely murdered the Jamaica Talavas bowling. Uh, Walton was absolutely electric. Unbeaten 84, 40 dollars, 8 fours and 6 sixes. Ronke, as I said, 55 unbeaten runs, 29 deliveries, 
Four fours and three sixes. And Walton, let's talk about the battle between Shadwick Walton and, uh, and Keswick Williams. And according to me, uh, that was the real toast on this particular match, I would say. Because as you know, Keswick Williams is such a baller. It's quite a character on the field, as you know. Every time he marks out, he removes his diary, flips through the pages, and then he says he marks him and uh, he starts uh, not doing, um, I mean, bowling to the batsman. And in this Caribbean Premier League, when I've seen that has been a feature. And Keswick Williams, um, uh, once uh, uh, Walton, uh, uh, probably in the previous match, uh, Keswick Williams, uh, in fact, uh, when Walton was out, he went after him and started flipping the pages and started uh, nailing it and saying, yes, I've done it. Uh, something like that. And Walton uh, definitely took him on yesterday. He pasted Keswick Williams for plenty of runs and Keswick Williams was looking like a sitting duck yesterday. And Walton, let me tell you what he did. Every stroke he played, every ball and every four he hit of Keswick Williams, he used to give, remind uh, Keswick Williams of, uh, of uh, what he does. So basically on the bat, he started flipping the pages and he said, this is one. And he kept on doing it till such time he marked it and finally said goodbye. Um, I mean, it was it was a real battle and it was real fun to watch. But there was absolutely uh, no, uh, absolutely uh, nothing between them. As you know, at the at the once the match was over, Walton actually embraced Keswick Williams. So it was all done uh, in good banter, I would say. Uh, but it was a nice repose that uh, Walton gave to Keswick Williams for Keswick Williams really, really. Uh, doing that to um, uh, Shadwick Walton when he was walking back to the pavilion. So basically, uh, so Walton, uh, uh, I said, he was electric. I mean, uh, the way he played, oh, what a player Shadwick Walton is. Four eight fours and six sixes. He hammered 84, four, but he definitely deserved a century, but it was all over and what a victory. 10.3 overs, Walton totally, totally, um, hitting the Jamaica Talawas very, very hard. And that was the end of Jamaica Talawas. Well, so Amazon um, having a very, very, like a walk in the park victory over uh, the Jamaica Talawas. What a match that was. Now, dear fans, friends and subscribers, uh, we look at some um, cricket news. As far as the cricket news is concerned, uh, uh, you know, they say, I mean, uh, as I already talked to you about uh, um, the Ravi Shastri talking about Dhoni, that he's, uh, you know, not even half finished because many people, as you know, are calling for Dhoni, uh, probably whether he's fit enough to play in ODIs. Uh, I sincerely feel uh, with all his, uh, uh, all, the uh, all the strokes that he's playing and all the uh, um, innings, I mean, all the uh, scores that he's getting, uh, one really has to say, uh, that Dhoni has it in him even now. And uh, I can give you one uh, live update. Uh, this is coming in from uh, the semi-finals, the second semi-finals, uh, which was uh, played between uh, Ham in the NatWest T20 Blast uh, semi-finals, which was played between uh, Nottinghamshire and uh, Hampshire. And the news is that Nottinghamshire has become the first team to enter the finals of the NatWest T20 Blast here in the United Kingdom and uh, not uh, made 169 for seven and hands uh, were all out for 146 that's the uh, the uh, not actually winning by 23 runs now the first semi-finals uh, has also been decided the first semi-finals uh, Birmingham uh, have silenced the Glamorgan uh, in fact Glamorgan lost the match Warwickshire uh, they won 175 for nine Glamorgan 164 uh, and uh, I reckon, looking at uh, what I'm seeing here, uh, it's going to be the Warwickshire, uh, sorry, it's Birmingham actually, uh, taking on uh, the Nottinghamshire uh, in the finals of the NatWest T20 Blast. Uh, that's what I could really see. In fact, in fact, uh, I, can I can give you some live scores right now. The finals of the NatWest T20 Blast is right now underway at Birmingham. And let's go there and see what is the real situation. So the Nottinghams are taking on Birmingham and it's the Natus T20 Blast Finals. And uh, looking at the score here, uh, I'm trying to go live to the ground right now. 
uh, to give you a live cricket update uh, of the Nottinghamshire uh, progress there. So Nottinghamshire, uh, who are, Warwickshire were the ones who actually won the toss. They inserted the Nottinghamshire into bat and Nottinghamshire right now, uh, I can say they are uh, they are doing well. Taylor, Brendan Taylor is not on 22 of 23 deliveries, three fours. Samit Parel, 20 of 18 balls with one four and one six. And currently, the Nottinghamshire are placed at 77 for three. Uh, we are in, into the 11th over, uh, 77 for three. That's the math situation uh, as uh, I see it here. Uh, well, in, in fact, while I'm talking to you, there is a boundary that has been hit. I'm trying to see this partnership is really blossoming. Uh, it's already going at clip of 10 runs per over, five overs and 52 runs have been added. Uh, and I think it's a very good pair at the crease right now, Brendan Taylor and Samit Patel. Uh, well, dear fans, subscribers, we are almost coming to an end of this daily cricket show for today. And it's time uh, for me, uh, your host Ram, on the daily cricket show, Cricket Happenings, to sign off by, uh, by, by telling you that uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow uh, to catch up on the final one day international between Sri Lanka and India. Till such time, it's, uh, it's goodbye.